In this video, I want to break it down step by step how to invest in the stock market for beginners. Now remember, the goal with investing is to one day live off our investment portfolio. But we have to start somewhere. We can't just click our fingers and be sipping cocktails on a beach living off of dividends. Let's start with the basics and break it down step by step how to get into investing. And by the way, everything in here is free. There's no hidden courses or anything at the end where you have to pay for something. No. Also, the timestamps are in the description below if you want to skip to a particular section. So for me, the reason why I personally invest in stocks is one thing, and that is passive, not active income. Essentially, there are two ways of earning income. One is you go to work all day, whether that be in an office or a construction site or customer service, whatever, and you actively earn your income, aka active income, work income. The second type of income is passive income and this is where you own an asset like a stock that produces income for you once you own it you get paid without having to do any extra work so it's completely passive and that for me at least is the number one reason to get invested in stocks so you don't have to work for every dollar that you earn so a stock is a security that represents ownership in a fraction of a business. Okay, so for example, if you own a stock in Coca-Cola, you actually become a very, very small owner in Coca-Cola the company. So if we look at Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrants, you join the fourth square of the quadrants where you own part of a business, but you don't have to work for the business. So in order to buy a stock, you need to sign up to a brokerage company. A brokerage company is a platform that allows you to buy and sell stocks. Now don't worry, this isn't 1995. You don't need a dodgy broker from Wall Street to do your trades. Go with a well-established company with a proven track record. If you're looking for a very cheap broker and you're just beginning your investing journey, Robinhood and Webull are quite popular. You can buy and sell stocks for free with them. Or if you have a bit more money and you're looking for a platform that's been around for a lot longer, look into one like Charles Schwab or Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. They're pretty easy and straightforward to sign up to if you're living in the USA. Just Google them, go to their website, and fill out a form or two, and step one, find a stockbroker, done. Now this is the important part. This is where a lot of people can go wrong. They get greedy, they don't do the work up front, and instead of making money, they lose money through uneducated, silly investing. So you need to decide what investing strategy you're gonna employ, and then what stocks are you gonna pick? So I'm gonna outline four different approaches to investing and the positives and negatives that come with them. Pick the style that you feel suits you in your specific situation and how you wanna invest. So the four styles are, one is dividend investing, a great approach for passive and reliable income. Two is value investing, the approach that Warren Buffett took, one of the wealthiest men in the world. Three is growth investing, and this is the style that Kathy Wood has been making a lot of money from recently. And the last type we'll go over is passive index fund investing, a laid back style that does well over the long term. So let's start with dividend investing. This approach is one where you can pretty much have guaranteed passive income through quarterly or monthly dividends. Dividend investing is an investing style where you buy stocks that pay a dividend as a portion of their earnings. They normally get paid every quarter, aka every three months, or sometimes they get paid every month or semi-annually. So if you pick out some good dividend stocks, that's one way to ensure passive income rolling into your bank accounts throughout the year. But you gotta play things smart, you can't just put your hand on a piece of paper and pick out the ones that pay the highest dividend, that's too risky. We need to understand the numbers behind the stock. So here are some things to look for in a dividend stock. There's four key things I want you to pay attention to. Uh, let's go onto my computer and I want to show you these four measures. So we're going to use Coca-Cola stock for the example. And the website that I generally like to use to get the stock metrics is Yahoo Finance. So we'll just click here. And this page gives us a summary of Coca-Cola stock. 
Now, what we wanna do is click on statistics and then scroll down until we see dividends and splits. And this is gonna give us some important information on the dividend side of Coca-Cola stock. So one of the first statistics we should look at is the dividend itself. So we can see here that the dividend for Coca-Cola is $1.68, which gives it a dividend yield of 2.86%. So, okay, if we bought $100 of Coca-Cola stock, we will get $2.86 every year as a dividend. So 2.86% is not too bad considering that the average dividend in the market is 1.3%. So it's always good to compare things to the average or to their competitors and that's how you get a feel for how good a stock's numbers is. Now the next thing we want to look at is the payout ratio. The payout ratio shows the proportion of earnings a company pays in the form of dividends and how much it reinvests in the business. Okay, so if a stock earned $10 a share and its payout ratio was 40%, this would mean they would pay out $4 as a dividend and $6 would be reinvested in the business. Now with Coca-Cola, we can see that the payout ratio is 82%. Now this means that most of the earnings that they generate, they pay out to the shareholders as a dividend. Now the other 18% they use to reinvest in the business. This is a very high payout ratio, to be honest with you. The reason is because Coca-Cola is such a mature business and they're more of a cash cow than a growth company. But generally, I do prefer the payout ratio to be quite a bit lower than 80%. And it's always good to see a business reinvest in their future growth instead of paying it all out as dividends. Speaking of growth, the third thing that we need to look at is the company's earnings over the past. Now to do this, we click on the summary section of Yahoo Finance. We've got to scroll down a bit. And here we get a good look at their past earnings. So the blue line is earnings, the green line is revenue. And with Coca-Cola, the earnings were trending to be higher and higher. That is, up until 2020, where of course they got hit in the pandemic and earnings went down. But generally, you want earnings to be trending upwards. I'll get, I guess we'll give them a pass because of the pandemic. And another important thing to look at before buying a dividend stock is their dividend history. Do they have a reliable past of paying dividends consistently or are they perhaps a bit more inconsistent? So for dividend history, I like to use the website Macro Trends, which we can find pretty easy on Google. And with Coca-Cola stock, we can see that they have a very strong history of paying out dividends. In fact, it seems that they've never dropped their dividend payouts over the course of history of their stock since 1974 as per this graph. So this means that in the future, if we bought the stock, they are pretty unlikely to drop their dividend payouts even in recessions and in bad economic times. So that's a big reason why Coca-Cola is and has been such a popular dividend stock over time. That sweet and reliable dividend. So other dividend stocks that are quite popular that you may want to look into in order to start building up a portfolio is 3M, ticker symbol MMM, dividend yield 3.3%. So that's a consumer goods company with quite a good dividend to it. Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol J&J, &J, dividend yield 2.5% in the healthcare sector. Or you could look at something like AT&T, a bit more of a riskier dividend, ticker symbol T. The dividend yield though is 8.5%, so that's very good in this market. So guys, get in slowly, get in stocks that are reliable with a good business model behind them and start building up a portfolio that hopefully one day you can retire off. Obviously, it's not going to be anytime soon. Don't get your hopes up too high. But once you start building and allow for some compound interest, you can actually grow a portfolio into something quite impressive if you give it time. So the positives of dividend investing are the passive income from the dividends. That income is pretty reliable, especially if you buy into strong business models. Plus, you'll get income from the capital gains of the stock. So it's, you know, those two forms of income. I'd say the main negative with dividend investing is sometimes these companies are more mature and they have less room for that high, quick growth that we see in other investing styles. So it's a lot safer form of investing and a lot more reliable, but we won't generally see those big YOLO returns as the youth call it.
Okay, now moving on to the investing style that made Warren Buffett a billionaire, and that is value investing. And I'm not saying that it's gonna make you a billionaire, we're not all Warren Buffett, but value investing can make some very healthy returns if done right. So the essence behind value investing is buying stocks at a price below their value. Basically, it's like bargain hunting, but instead of going to a garage sale or going to shops, you go to the stock market. So now the question becomes, wait, how do we know if a stock is cheap? Do we just look at the price? And if the price goes down by 20%, then it's cheap, then it's a bargain. Unfortunately, it's not that simple because often when the price goes down, the value of the business goes down as well. So the key to value investing is determining the intrinsic value of the business. Once you know the value, you can simply compare it to the price and see how much of a bargain you're getting or how badly you're getting ripped off. Now, I made another video on this that breaks it down into three steps on how to calculate the value of a stock. So I'm gonna leave that in the description box below. It's actually not too hard once you know what you're doing. And then basically what you do is you go around analyzing different stocks and you compare the price to the value, compare the price to the value, the price to the value. That's what Warren Buffett did when he was younger. But back in those days, without the internet, he used the Moody's manual instead. He said that he went through the entire book twice just by reading over different businesses and looking for bargains, looking for high value and low prices. But there's a lot of stocks in the stock market. So one way of screening for value stocks is looking for the ones with low PE ratios. A PE ratio is short for price to earnings ratio. And essentially, as per the name, it compares the price to the earnings. If the number is low, it means the price is cheap compared to the earnings. And if the number is high, it means the price is expensive compared to the earnings that a stock brings in. Pretty easy to find the PE ratio on stocks. So you just go to our friend Yahoo Finance again. We go to the summary section and it says it right here, 29 for Coca-Cola. So that means the price is 29 times higher than the yearly earnings. And it will take around 29 years to get our money back if earnings stay the same. Now you might ask if 29 is high or low. Well, one way to work that out is to compare it to the market's average PE ratio. The market's PE ratio is sitting around 29.3 right now. So Coca-Cola is around the average price of the market, price to earnings. It's not really cheaper, it's not really more expensive. So Coca-Cola is definitely more of a dividend play compared to a value play. So some examples of stocks that are quite popular with value investors include Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce company. A lot of value investors are buying this after its recent dip. It's a bit of a controversial investment, I'm not gonna lie. But famous value investors like Charlie Munger and Ray Dalio are two big names that have bought the stock. Then we've got Berkshire Hathaway, another value stock. In fact, this is kind of like a group of value stocks since Warren Buffett is the head investor of Berkshire who owns a bunch of stocks under the company. Then we've got GameStop. This was a huge value play, especially a year ago before the whole Reddit hedge fund saga. And bank stocks are another place to start for value investors this year, especially with their low PE ratios. Buffett has bought big into them over the past couple of years. And I'm not saying that you should definitely go and buy these stocks, but these are a place to start if you're looking to find a value investment. Okay, this is an investment style that has more risk associated with it. If a recession comes, you're probably gonna get hit hard. But on the other hand, there's a lot more potential for those quick high returns. Now we can look at someone like Kathy Wood who's adopted innovation slash growth as her core investing style. And over seven years, her innovation fund averaged an annual return of 39%. That's the average. Over three times the return of the S&P 500. So growth investing, if done smartly, 
can pay off big time. And there's a couple of core things that we need to focus on with growth investing. The most important thing is we need to work out where is the business heading in the future? Is it innovative? Is it disruptive? Is it the next Tesla changing the car industry? Or will it be the type of business that gets left behind? Like the textile business in the 70s or the video rental or newspaper business in the 2000s. They got wiped out by innovation. So put your thinking cap on and try work out what will be the disruptive companies over the next 5 to 10 years. So some examples of industries that could flourish in the future include artificial intelligence, automation, robotics, self-driving cars, Elon Musk, thank you, blockchain companies. You know, these sectors could change the way business is done in the future. And a lot of growth investors are focusing on these particular ones, these sectors. But you do need to do a bit of digging into their financials. There's no point in buying a business that's going to be popular, but not make any money. So for growth investing, revenue is a very important figure to look at. Revenue is the total income that the business is generating. We need to look at this and importantly, check that it's growing. So for Tesla, one of the most popular stocks, we can see that in Yahoo Finance, that every year they're generating more and more money. Also, if we look into the future under revenue estimates, we can see that the analysts expect it to keep growing at a strong rate of knots. Now, the other thing that we want to look at is return on equity because it gives us a good idea on how effective the business is from a monetary standpoint. So return on equity is calculated as net income divided by shareholders' equity. This shows us how much profit we can make as a percentage of equity. We want this number to be as high as possible. Now we can find return on equity by simply scrolling under statistics in Yahoo Finance. Scroll down a little bit. And there we have a return of equity for Tesla of 15.6%. So 15% is not bad, especially when we compare it to their competitors, which I'll show you soon. And just a little bit up is profit margins, another metric to help us get a feel for the business and its effectiveness. And as we can see, Tesla's is 7.4%. So that means for every $100 in revenue that Tesla generates, $7.40 will be the profit. Now, it can be hard to tell if these numbers are good or not, but as with everything, we have to compare it to other companies in order to get a feel for things. So Tesla's competitors include NEO, which has a negative 30% profit margin and a negative 47% return on equity. Ford, a 2.1% profit margin and an 8.1% 8, 8 return on equity. Volkswagen, 7.2% in profit margin and a negative 14% return on equity. And Nikola, another competitor, which has a 0% profit margin and a minus 75% return on equity. So Tesla actually beats all of these competitors with these two metrics. Elon Musk is a very smart man, I guess we can just say that. Another thing that many growth investors like to do, I don't particularly like it, but that is looking at the past price of a stock and see if it's trending upwards. So it's pretty easy to see this. We just type in Tesla stock in Google, go back five years, and we can see that every year it seems to be trending upwards by quite a bit. And this is no guarantee that in the future that the stock will only head up, but some people like that positive forward momentum. Some examples of growth slash innovation stocks to start looking into can include Coinbase, a cryptocurrency exchange platform. And that's if you want to build into the blockchain sector without buying individual cryptocurrencies. Intelligia Therapeutics are an exciting company that are into genome editing, looking to cure diseases. Then we've got Palantir, a company that uses software to integrate data to improve business decisions. So this is an exciting company founded by Peter Thiel, who also co-founded PayPal and was the first outside investor into Facebook. So he's got a proven track record. And then even Tesla, the electric car company, that's a growth stock. But Tesla is so big now, its market cap is 1.1 trillion. So that means that it has less growth potential on the upside. 
You really want to buy the stocks before they get overly hyped up, where they're just starting to gain momentum and they're getting talked about on smaller platforms like Reddit forums or certain Discord groups. That's when you want to buy. Generally not when every big media outlet is talking about them. So if you buy earlier, that's where you make the big 10, 20, even 100x type returns. Okay, passive investing in an index fund is the way to go if you don't want to spend time researching and analyzing different stocks. The interesting thing about index investing is it actually beats most other returns that big hedge funds get. It sounds untrue, but it is actually true. So this is why you have people like Warren Buffett recommending it to most investors. So an index fund is simply a basket of stocks that tracks a specific group of the market. Okay, for example, the S&P 500 index fund is a group of 500 large stocks that tracks the American stock market. The Vanguard Information Technology Fund has more than 300 US technology stocks tracking the tech side of the market. Then we got the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Fund tracks a group of 247 companies that have increased their dividend for long periods of time. So you can see that you can buy index funds, aka a group of stocks that tracks most areas of the market, depending on what you want to invest into. And it sounds weird and it almost sounds too easy, like what's the catch? But sometimes when it comes to investing, less is more. I would say that among the various propositions offered you, a very low cost index fund where you don't put all your money in at one time. I mean, if, 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 you, if you accumulate a a low cost index fund over 10 years uh, with fairly regular sums, I think you will probably do better than 90% of the people around you that take up investing at a similar time. So to buy an index fund, you simply enter the ticker symbol of the fund you want on your brokerage accounts, whether that be a world market index fund, a Chinese one, don't know why you do China, just kidding, a real estate one, a healthcare one, think of the sectors of the market that you want to be invested in and go from there. And the important thing is not to wait around too much. Okay, do your upfront research, make sure you have a good understanding of the basics, but you don't need to be Warren Buffett before you start investing. Dip your feet in by buying your first stock. Remember, stocks are not too expensive. Ford stock is $20, Apple $180, Coca-Cola $60. Get in the game with a small amount of money and then learn as you go. The worst thing you can do is wait lose the motivation to invest, and then not invest at all. One question that we may ask is, look how high stock market prices are right now. We've essentially been on a 13-year bull market run and prices have just kept going up. Is there any tactic we should have for this? Isn't there going to be a crash? So with investing, we need to be looking long term. It's something that I learned from Warren Buffett. We must think in 5, 10 years time, is the market going to be higher or lower? It's going to be higher because stocks, aka businesses, continue to produce and earnings continue to increase. So even if we buy now, and God forbid there is a crash, that crash at some point will rebound. The key is that when it crashes, we don't panic and sell and we do what Buffett does. If it crashes, buy more stocks because that's when stocks are cheaper. That's where there's even more profit to be made. Also, if you buy good quality stocks that are producing income, adding value to their customers, innovating, you're going to make money even if the market has its dips. If you invest smartly, you don't need to fear a crash. So, pick which investing style you want to take up going forward, learn all you can about that style. Actually, learn all investing styles and take what you can away from each different style. Start dipping your feet into a couple of stocks. Make some mistakes, it's okay, you will make mistakes. And slowly, slowly start to master the art of investing and at some point, you'll be able to retire off of your portfolio. That's the goal with investing and I wish you guys the best of luck with your journey in the stock market.